five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one. I'm from a place where the girls are always looking pretty. You might have heard of us. We call it Shy City. We build champions here who define gritty. We don't do excuses. We don't do pity. Rose is coming back stronger. That's a guarantee. Cutler's coming back too. He's beastly. Throwing it to Marshall. The title's ours easily. Blackhawks are winning titles. Trophy looking massive. Don't forget about the Cubs, Sox, Crosstown Classic. With so much greatness, we got to show bravado. You got your boys Ambro and Mike Mercado. Welcome in to the Chicago Beat. I am Mike Mercado, as always, with my best friend, Secret Producer Man. It is March 25th, 2013, a gloomy, cold Monday here in the city of Chicago. It is the Chicago Beat, the weekend that was, the week that it is. You can follow us everywhere in the universe. We're on Twitter, at the Chicago Beat. We're on Facebook, the Chicago Beat. And, of course, on YouTube, slash Mike Mercado 2333. So this past weekend... Everything has been March Madness. I don't know about you guys, but my bracket is pretty much busted. I'm still in a pretty good position. I have three of my Final Four teams still in it. The Bulls, all of a sudden, finding ways to win. They're beating Indiana. They're beating Minnesota. Guys are coming back, but yet no Derrick Rose. And the Blackhawks, after a long time off, finally come back on the ice to play against the LA Kings without Marion Hossa. So there was a lot to get into from this past weekend. It is our first ever Monday edition of the Chicago Beat. The weekend that was, the week that is, here on the Chicago Beat. The Chicago Beat is delivered by InFlight Express. Want to get your shipping needs done fast and quick? Visit InFlightExpress.com. So last night, the Bulls finished off the weekend with their second win in a row against the Minnesota Timberwolves after beating Indiana. And again, just quick statistics. The, the things that kind of caught my eyes from this past weekend when it comes to the Chicago Bulls have been Jimmy Butler, Todd Gibson returning, and the fact that this team still has no Derrick Rose. And... and and you can say whatever you want about this Bulls season. I can sit here right now and tell you why the Bulls, at this point, still trying to hold on to the six playoff spot, trying not to get into the seven and eight spot, could try to make a finals run. I could try to sit here and tell you why this team is good enough defensively or has enough energy to win an NBA title. At this point, I don't know if I could say that anymore, though. And it has nothing to do with the team. It has to do with Derrick Rose again. Because this whole season has been based off of when Derek gets back. And we've, for all you people who have listened to this show as long as you guys have, we have so many loyal listeners that, you know, I, I try to thank as much as often. And they know it's the same story. It means nothing if Derek doesn't come back. And at this point, you, you can't tell me that this team, even though right now it's on an upswing after two nice wins, especially a big one over Indiana and Miami coming, very, you know, in a few days, it, you can't tell me that. It hasn't changed the way people have thought about this season. And that's that's really how, it, how it's been. So at this point, with only a little less than 15 games left in the season, should he even come back? What difference does it make if he comes back? And that's what has drove, I guess, I don't want to say driven the season, but has kind of been the storyline of it. And I'm just sick of it. But there's nothing else to talk about this team. How many times can we sit here and say there are only seven people deep? We knew that. We knew that heading into the season after losing Omer, after losing Jimmy, uh, excuse me, Ronnie Brewer, after losing Kyle Korver, you know, John Lucas the third, C.J. Watson. It, we knew this team was going to be light when it came to depth. You haven't had Rip Hamilton. God knows if Rip Hamilton is ever going to play a game again in the National Basketball Association. Kirk Heinrich's been the glass man. You haven't had Derrick Rose all season. Joe Kim Noah hasn't played. Taj Gibson has missed games. You're talking about trying to win an NBA title, trying to win NBA games with Carlos Boozer, Jimmy Butler, Nate Robinson, Lou Aldang, who has missed some time too, Nazi Muhammad, Vladimir Rodmanovich, Marco Bellinelli. How many teams are going to win an NBA title with that roster? And I understood, you know, hindsight is 2020. It's easy to play Monday morning quarterback when it comes to this stuff. But let's, let's be honest about it. The Matt Bulls management, I think, all along knew Derrick Rose was not going to play this season. I think they were hoping he was. But you don't expect Derrick Rose to come back and try to compete for a title knowingly putting that roster around him. You don't. So this team, uh, the management obviously thought that this team wasn't going to win an NBA Finals. Just look at the roster. We're, so, we're at the end of the season. Now is the time we can reflect upon it. 
this team was a high intensity, high effort, defensive minded team that bought into its coach. It got tired and driven to the ground. It had a lot of air taken out of its balloon when Derek talked to USA Today and Reggie Rose had his comments to say to the media. This has all happened in front of Rise, and now that we're at the end of the season, we're almost in April, when people should be concentrated about the playoff push, this team is worried about when Derrick Rose comes back. So it's been a tale of two it's been a tale of two different seasons. And I think a great example that I heard of was on ESPN one thousand on Saturday with Sarah Spain and uh, John Greenberg, I think. And they were talking about how the optimism in this city was he might be back in the beginning of the year, January. He might be back right before the All-Star break. He could be back a week after the All-Star break. We are a month away from the playoffs, and he is nowhere near being back. If anything, we are further from it because now he's bringing God into the situation. We went over those quotes on Friday's edition of the Chicago Beat. If you missed them, you could go on Twitter at the Chicago Beat or on Facebook at the Chicago Beat or on my personal Twitter, mercado2333, and you can see them yourself. But today, I... After this weekend, after my hopes getting up of seeing them beat Indiana and beating a bad Minnesota team, you're hoping that they can make some noise, maybe find a way to beat Miami's 26-game streak coming up later on this week. But at the end of the day, guys, it, it really is this. Bulls management didn't think they were going to win at finals. And they didn't give Tom Thibodeau a lot to work with. And Derrick Rose hasn't helped himself out with this situation. And you know we're going to have a lot more to talk about this on Wednesday because I'm sure there's going to be more news to talk about then. Coming up next on the Chicago Week, on the weekend that was, the week that will be, the Stanley Cup champions come to the United Center to take on the best team in the NHL. It's Blackhawks and Kings, next on the Chicago Beat. The part I don't to be ashamed of, good people aren't supposed to be up. I found peace with this path I took, as I lay down my head. The crossroads you gotta choose. Which way do we win or lose? And every bone in my soul says I sing on through. Looking to start a brand new career today? Visit BeOnAir.com. That's the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Guys, I went to the school and graduated in 2011. It is 2013 and I have two jobs in the industry, my own website, and a podcast. We have two beautiful campus locations. One in downtown Chicago, right on State Street, so you're right in the heart of the city. Or your suburbanite, we have one in Lombard. Guys, they have people in the industry today. Hell, even I work there. I'm a graduate assistant on top of working for All Access Radio Chicago and the Chicago Beat. It is a beautiful place, guys. Just visit beyondair.com or dial 630-916-1700 and schedule an appointment today. They will give you a tour. It is awesome, guys. That's beyondair.com, the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. So 7 tonight, the best team in the NHL, the team with a 24-point streak. The Chicago Blackhawks welcome the Stanley Cup champion, Los Angeles Kings. I think it's great that the fact that the Blackhawks are the story of the NHL right now. But I think it's even better is as great as they've played, this team, you can hear it in the quotes when they talk to the media, that they are not complacent with that. They are not complacent with being the number one team in the Western Conference. They are not complacent with having the best record in the NHL. No, they, you could hear it when this team talks. When you hear Jonathan Tays or Patrick Kane or Sharp whole side, it doesn't matter. They acknowledged that the streak was cool, that it was a big deal, but they knew at the end of the day, it was all about the Stanley Cup. And that's why this game has a lot of meaning to it in my eyes. You have the Stanley Cup champions in the Los Angeles Kings. They were in eighth seed last year. Their goalie got hot and took them all the way to the finals where they eventually won it. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that we've seen Blackhawks teams get knocked out in the first round. No problem doesn't matter all the talent in the world you have i cannot sit here unless i went on my phone on my laptop i cannot sit here and name anybody for the for the kings i can't i'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys you guys know i'm not going to lie to you as my audience i'm not going to but star power only gets you so far star power only gets you so far and that is what's so beautiful about the nhl is that it takes a great team great defense great goaling great line shifts it takes a, co- a cohesive unit to win a stanley cup so it's the toughest championship to win in all of sports and having the kings come into town almost puts back the mentality into the minds of not just the players because the players are always ready but the fan that anything can happen anything will happen so at that point i'm very excited about tonight's game i think tonight's game is going to be a good one i think the blackhawks are going to win i'm going four to two blackhawks over the kings 
the big thing is just remember you're watching a team that last season was the eight seed and won the Stanley Cup Finals. That means they had to beat the one seed. Seeds don't matter. This team needs to get healthy, get Hosa back, who will not play today. They need to get him back. They need to get everybody intact, and they have to get ready for this playoff push. That's coming right around the corner already. The beautiful thing about the Blackhawks is that they have such a big lead that they can ha- they can heal people. So at the end of the season, I don't. Again, we were talking about this on Friday on the Chicago beat. It'd be crazy to think that they might end up as a two seed. Because Anaheim is right on their tail and they might take over. If that's the case, so be it. Let them have the pressure of the number one seed. Blackhawks have the streak record. They have the time now. All they need to do is get healthy and make that playoff push. And that is more important than anything else this season. Is that this team would have won its second Stanley Cup in almost four years. That would be cool. We got March Madness coming up next here on the Chicago Beat. So I don't know about you guys, but as fun as March Madness is, my lord, did it give me a headache all weekend long. You're on the Chicago Beat with Mike Mercado and Secret Producer Man. You can follow us everywhere in the universe. We're at Twitter at the Chicago Beat. We're on Facebook slash the Chicago Beat. If you want to follow me personally, I, I am at mmercado2333 and at Facebook, Mike Mercado. So my bracket so far has been kind of messed up. I, I lost Wisconsin. I've lost... You know, Georgetown really didn't have them going too far. Just some great upsets. But I think what's so great about March Madness is that everybody loves March Madness. Even the people who don't do don't do um, brackets, they talk about it because it's everywhere. It's it's water cooler talk. It's coffee talk. It's it's talk that you have. You, you got teams like Florida Gulf Coast beating big name schools, getting to the Sweet Sixteen. You have LaSalle, first four in, now part of the Sweet Sixteen. I think it's one of the best time in sports. Is this March Madness. But so far, Michigan State, Indiana, and Florida are the only teams I have left. And if those teams don't make it, I am screwed, guys. I am screwed. So I want to see your guys' bracket. Go on the Chicago Beats Facebook or on Twitter at the Chicago Beat and post your guys' brackets. I want to see them. I want to see if you guys could beat my score. I hope you guys all enjoyed the weekend that was, the week that will be here on the Chicago Beat. I am back on Wednesday, of course, with Secret Producer Man. We are live here from the Lombard Studios at ICB. For everybody here at the Chicago Beat, I will see you on Wednesday. Have a good one, guys. Later.